John here guys and today I'm here to talk about what should be your first drone and my recommendation for 2019 going into 2020 is the SEMA X100. Now if you're new to the channel I have a channel all about indoor drones, micro drones, outdoor drones, racing drones, how to build a drone, how to get excellent camera footage with your drone and everything under the sun. But what I get asked probably most often is, and is actually the hardest to answer is what should be my first drone? What can I fly? What can I hand to a a child, a nephew, a niece, an uncle, a cousin, a brother, a co-worker to let them get a sense of the amazing feeling of what it's like to be able to control a flying aircraft with your hands and actually make it fly. Um, most of us will never be a pilot and so piloting an RC aircraft is the closest that we can get and in a lot of ways it gives you such an amazing thrill but it's so hard to get to the point where you can fly one of those racing drones let's say or even a tiny whoop which is a micro drone just only slightly smaller than this that you would fly in your house it's so difficult and i have tested many many different types of drones all different kinds handing it to people even people who are gamers and used to using their thumbs in a very dexterous way and no one can keep it in the air for more than five seconds so what's the answer well maybe the answer is one of these toy grade drones like this one that it comes for a cheap price under fifty dollars including the radio and not only is it everything you need but it is so easy to keep in the air it has auto takeoff auto land wall sensors on all four directions so that it won't bump into your walls. And here's the reasons why this should be your first drone or a drone if you're an experienced racer, this isn't gonna be fun for you, but one you should keep in your house in case you ever have someone come over and you want to let them try the sticks. How do you get someone hooked? It's not by having them crash 20 times in two minutes it's by actually letting them float in the air for a good few minutes and this i am very confident that you can hand to any beginner and they'll be able to complete an entire flight within two tries and when i say an entire flight i mean an entire battery so a full two to three minutes so let's get into the features it comes with this very small little radio it's like a mini dji type style it has um, four shoulder buttons up at the top and it has two gimbals. Um, now each of the gimbals also have a push in button, which is kind of like a button on your uh, Xbox or PlayStation remote. Just turn it on by pushing this button here. Now this comes with a little charger, an extra set of props and little tools. It has very protected um, ducted props so it won't be bumping into your wall and if you have it on the default mode which is very very slow that's part of the key of why you cannot crash it is because it's so slow <laughs> but but that slowness is an advantage in that you can actually float in the air and just drift around super nice and slowly it's so much fun if you've never had something like this before it has little felt tips on the bottom of the motor so that when it lands it's nice and soft and there are light sensors just simple cheap light sensors but they're very effective as soon as you get about a foot or two away from a wall it'll automatically just fly back the opposite way very simple very easy um, and now if you want to get a little bit more speed so basically in the default mode you can probably walk faster than this thing flies um, so once you master that and you can fly around your living room without crashing into anything, you can switch it into high rate mode, high speed mode by just pushing the right uh, thumbstick inwards. So if the radio was on, you would push this in, it would beep if it was connected, then you know that you are in high speed mode. Um, the bottom has a little battery tray. It comes with two batteries. Um, you just slide one in, plug it into the little connector, close the door, and then 
shut the little um, battery tray holder and you're good to go. You just power it on by pushing this little power button on the top for two seconds. It'll come on, lights will start flashing. Um, the two green lights is the rear, the two red lights is the front. It's kind of opposite like uh, of how you might think of a car. Um, this shoulder button, so your right shoulder button that's closest to you is your takeoff and um, land. Now in order to arm it, once you have your craft on and the remote on, you push the controller stick down, up. It will beep. The lights will stop flashing. That means it's armed. You go down one more time and now the propellers will start spinning and you are ready to take off. You can take off manually by just pushing the left stick, which is the throttle up, or you can auto take off by pushing this little hover to approximately three or four feet and just kind of stay there. Um, now, usually when you think of a drone, you think of a DJI, which is very smart, has GPS, all kinds of sensors um, on board, and that's what allows it to hover. So when you hand someone a hobby drone, a racing drone, it doesn't have those sensors on board, so it does not hover. It needs constant stick inputs to stay in the air. This actually is one of the best hovering drones that I've seen without GPS technology built in. It does a really good job of staying in place. Um, now you can't just let it sit in the air for like several minutes. It will very slowly start to drift after a little while, but it's easily enough for you to be able to react and keep it in the air. Um, and that's the difference with a lot of these hobby grade drones. As soon as you take off, it'll just go like that and you need constant manipulation. This is much, much easier to fly. And that's kind of why I think at this price point, right now there's a coupon code for $35. I'll leave in the description below that you can get through Amazon. And for you overseas guys, I'll leave a coupon to uh, Banggood below. But $35 to $50 is the right range for this. Um, and it's just, you know, if, you're, if you want to try out a drone, don't go out and spend $2,000 right off the bat. You know, get something, learn how to fly it. The mechanics of a DJI on this are essentially the same. It's gonna be, you know, the stick, left stick throttle, right stick, forward, back, left, right. You know, it's, the controls are identical. So you can learn how to fly, learn how to react um, with one of these small crafts before you and take that investment. And if you decide to then go into the FPV world, which is what I specialize on this channel, and you want to try your hand at racing or freestyle tricks, um, you can at least see if it's something that you even like before you jump off that deep end, you know. And it's not for everyone. You know, don't be one of those people that ends up selling all their gear six months later because they just didn't find they took a liking to it. Um, and then the other thing is, a lot of people say, you know, if somebody's interested in the hobby, make them build their first drone, make them build the first drone. I totally disagree with that. I think you need to feel the, you know, the awesome feeling of flying first. You need to get somebody in the air. Then they know when, when you try to start building, you know, it's going to be a, so much research, so much effort, and you don't know what the payoff is. You need to have them know what an awesome feeling it is know what they're working towards. Um, and that's why I think you need to get them in the air with something that's easy to fly. So this Christmas, if you're looking for a Christmas gift for your husband, your wife, your sister, your brother, your nephew, your niece, this is a really cool option. Um, if you have a secret Santa at work, perfect uh, kind of a gift if, if it's uh, in the budget. And, uh, you know, my very first drone that I bought was the SEMA. It was an X5C. It's a little bit bigger than this. It's kind of um, for learning outdoors. And that's also a good option. I'll leave the link to that below. Um, that was way back in 2015, if you can believe that. And uh, SEMA doesn't have, you know, it's not all about performance. It's, it's the ability to fly at your fingertips. So if, you know, a lot of you guys that are on my channel, racing guys are going to be like, ah, oh, that's a baby drone. Well, when you tell someone to go buy a Tiny Whoop, which is a small little hobby grade drone, 
you're also telling them you need to go out and buy a charger. You need to go buy batteries. You need to buy goggles. You got to buy goggles. You got to buy batteries for the goggles. You got to get a radio. You got to learn how to bind it up. You got to learn this software. You got to learn all these things before you can take your very first flight. And you got to come up with a shopping list of things that are all compatible together. It's so difficult for a beginner, guys. One click of a button on Amazon Prime, you have it at your door the next day. It has everything in this box you need to get in the air. Perfect starter kit, guys. This is how we're gonna get more people in the hobby. If, you know, you may decide it's time to upgrade from this very quickly, but that's okay because then you have this to pass on to the next person to keep in your house. So I think I'm gonna keep this in my house probably permanently, and then when people come over, they see all my drones, they wanna get a taste of it, this is what I'm gonna hand them. I've tried handing them every other type of craft, big or small, no one can do it, it's too difficult. This is the answer, guys, SEMA X100. Thanks, guys.